Hello! In this episode of Philobrick Machine, we are going to visit the local forest. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, in this case, I uh, go to the forest, pick up uh, some uh, mushrooms, and uh, make a meal out of them. Well, that's all about this episode, so let's go to the forest then. Ah! Not you! Not you! Not you! Not you! Not you! <laughs> this uh, guy! Well, up! 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 Yeah! Up! Safety goggles are probably not the correct uh, safety equipment while picking mushrooms. Instead, I recommend using your brain. Only pick up mushrooms that you know to be safe and with which you are familiar with. Some mushrooms may require cooking in boiling water in order to be edible. Some mushrooms need to be processed in a certain way or else these are outright poisons. Don't gamble with mushrooms that you know to be poisonous or mushrooms that you do not know. You might risk your health or in the worst case find yourself walking the green mile. Well, this time uh, this episode will be well, uh, hello! <laughs> this time this episode will be uh, uh, a visit in the forest. And uh, we are going to try to find some mushrooms here. Uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, well, usually in September uh, it's very easy to find mushrooms in Finland. Uh, well, uh, I already found my first mushrooms. Le let me show you. They are here. Uh, Hopefully we can find those, these here. That's an uh, edible mushroom, which are okay, they are really small, but when you find uh, one of those, you usually find a few of those. They tend to grow in groups. Uh, well, in, not in this time, but yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, this mushroom, this uh, Cantarelli, uh, uh, Fifelinge in Deutsch, <laughs> uh, this is a really appreciated uh, mushroom in Finland. Uh, well, uh, but uh, let me seek for more. Maybe we can find uh, some uh, uh, more, uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's go on and walk uh, through the forest. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was something I was expecting to find here. Uh, these mushrooms here. This is a very nice, of course, edible mushroom, which is delicious. And uh, these are not big, but they are always uh, in really, they tend to make colonies. And if I look here around now, well, we have a lot of ants here, <laughs> but uh, these are friendly ants. They don't have a stinger. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, as I said, they tend to make colonies. And here we have some more. Uh, these are a little bit bigger. Very good. Yeah, okay. Now I just pick up this colony here. <laughs> Well, pick up a colony. Uh, that's uh, easier said than done. Uh, let me show you. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, here we have some, some, some more there. Quite a lot actually. And then if I turn around, <laughs> we <laughs> have uh, more there. And uh, this just goes on uh, with this path. They grow alongside uh, this path here. So, yeah. So, just when I thought that I got that colony out, 
well, it just became uh, worse. Uh, we have also here, and it's really along this uh, trail, there is a lot of this, and uh, yeah. Uh, lucky me, these are probably one of the most delicious mushrooms in a, in a Finnish forest. So, well, yeah. Uh, in Finnish, this, uh, the name of this uh, mushroom is Suppilo Vahver. Well, uh, the Finnish forest, it's uh, somehow gorgeous. Uh, for example, this rock you see here, you notice uh, maybe that it's, uh, it's round. Well, that is because there was uh, maybe 10,000 years ago a glacier that uh, ground this rock to its current form. It must have been a lot higher, and uh, yeah. And uh, the colors of autumn, they are not full blown yet, but there is some here, and uh, this is really nice. Well, this probably isn't edible, but it's still, well, it's beautiful, isn't it? Well, here is another species I was uh, looking for. This mushroom gives a very good aroma to your uh, whatever you are making out of mushrooms. But you, you don't use it a lot. It's uh, not poisonous. And uh, the, uh, you can identify this mushroom by knocking it over like this. And then you see white milk coming out. That's how you identify this one. And of course uh, the general uh, habitus of the mushroom. So now I will pick up them a few, but I try to keep them separate from the good mushrooms, because these uh, mushrooms must be cooked. Well, I think everybody knows this mushroom. Uh, well, uh, I think this is... Uh, well, this here is the fly agaric. <laughs> Well, uh, it contains muscarine, which is a nerve uh, toxin, and well, uh, they probably don't taste very good. Well, now I'm entering an area where we should find those uh, yellow mushrooms, like that one. There we have a few of them here, hiding in plain sight, here. And, uh, well, yeah, uh, usually this area contains a lot of them, but I don't need a lot of them, uh, just a few. Well, uh, while picking those yellow mushrooms, <laughs> I found this here in the forest. Uh, well, it was lying on the ground uh, here. Uh, well, it's a mushroom knife. Uh, you usually use that kind of knife when you pick up mushrooms. I don't like that. I have a knife like this. This is more practical for me. This is, uh, well, it has a brush uh, to wipe away all sorts of uh, stuff uh, that's in your mushrooms, but, well, I can manage without that one. I have good fingers. Oh yeah, uh, these mushrooms have uh, taught everything. Well, uh, first of all, they grow along a path, and then they advertise themselves, uh, they are really visible, <laughs> and Furthermore, there is uh, this. <laughs> well, another colony. Uh, a lot of those. Well, aren't these just beautiful? This is some uh, plant <laughs> that I don't know the name of. But yeah, these are, well, well, uh, this formation here is very typical for Finnish forests. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> ant's nest. Well, they have collected all those needles uh, from the trees, and now they are nesting here. And these ants are not uh, very dangerous, they are actually quite friendly. I hope we can see some of those. They are quite silent. Normally this just, uh, there is a lot of traffic uh, on top of these. But this one is quite quiet and uh, the reason might be uh, the autumn. They are now going uh, to sleep. 
Oh, well, uh, you need to know what you are picking. <laughs> oh, well, uh, in the forest you can uh, find all sorts of uh, mushrooms, uh, like here. Let me show you. Well, I wouldn't pick up these. <laughs> these look uh, uh, nice, and they make colonies, so that you could probably get a lot of them. Well, you never know what uh, happens if you eat one of those. It could be really poisonous. Okay, now there is a delicacy. Uh, this mushroom here, <coughs> hopefully it's in good condition. At least it's uh, wet. And if I lift it, yeah, it looks very promising. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It bleeds milk. So I can pick it up. Uh, this is a little bit uh, difficult with one hand. Usually these become eaten, uh, eaten right away when they grow up. <laughs> uh, this was uh, quite pure of worms. Yep. Yeah. So okay, uh, we are back into in our kitchen from the forest. <laughs> And now, uh, well, our goal is to make something uh, edible out of those. Well, uh, part of the mushrooms are really not edible as such. You really need to uh, prepare them uh, by cooking uh, before you can eat these. And uh, for that reason I have uh, this mushroom in a separate bag here. Uh, we need uh, water. To cook them in. Uh, we have uh, quite uh, little of them so I put this on uh, my stove and uh, well uh, set the heat on. And then uh, we just uh, see what we have inside here. Uh, we don't have a lot of these. So let's see. I take this where I collect them. I just check that we don't have uh, too many worms here. Yeah, that was quite clean. Mm, clean. Well, yeah. And this was the deli deli delicious one. <laughs> well, but it's still you have to cook it. And yeah, uh, the amount of these mushrooms is more than enough to our fo wood food uh, because uh, these have a very strong taste in them. And uh, yeah, uh, and it's a little bit like a pepper, so uh, yeah, okay. And then we have some very small, and uh, these uh, smalls you have to be really careful, so uh, so that uh, these are really the species you want to, because you can make uh, really bad mistakes with these. Uh, well. Uh, it would be a bad idea to eat mushrooms that uh, give you, that hospitalize you. <laughs> that's uh, okay. That's now empty. Uh, it wasn't much, so very little, a little of those. And uh, I'll wait until this uh, water is really cooking, and then I will put them into there. And then we uh, prepare. The next set of mushrooms, which were those, uh, which you could probably eat uh, as such, but uh, we don't do that either. So I need. Uh, well, I could probably put them directly to my skillet. Uh, well, I'm going to fry them, so I just put them there after uh, I have handled them. And these are the mushrooms. And uh, this is this uh, yellow thing, which is, uh, well, it's very, very, uh, this is highly valued in Finland, uh, this yellow mushroom. And then we are almost through with those. Here we have a few more here. Yeah, those ones that I picked up uh, as first. So, quite a lot of them. And, uh, well, of course you have a little bit of uh, uh, trash like this in there, but uh, 
Uh, it's uh, not very uh, uh, dangerous. It's just a leaf. <laughs> so, and I, I really want to have my mushrooms, uh, well, medium-sized uh, chunks. Not very fine, but not very big either. So, medium. <laughs> so I chop them before I put them in my fry pan. Yeah, and you might be wondering what we are going to do this, uh, prepare them this into. It will be a simple uh, mushroom sauce, which you can eat with potatoes, for example. Well, there you are. I think that's more than enough. Uh, these. Uh, uh, actually, when you when you cook those uh, in your fry pan, they will uh, go a lot smaller. Namely, 80% of this material is water. And now I just uh, look that I don't have big chunks of uh, twigs or anything here. I try to collect this quite clean so that I don't have any trouble with those. Okay. And this is uh, a little bit tastier than, than that one, but this also contains a lot more water, <laughs> so yeah. And we can set uh, that one already on heat. Uh, do you see it, by the way? Well, you don't. I'll. Uh, Put it this way, so now you can see it. And the steam you can see there is uh, coming from the kettle, which I already put on on heat, so that I can boil these. Oh, there is a snail. Oh. And yeah, uh, if you have one or two snails here, uh, so small, well. Hmm. I don't know whether you noticed them <laughs> or not. Uh, this is a little awkward. Okay, let's put those there too. And in case you wonder, wonder the sound that is on the background all the time, it's our dishwashing machine. So. This knife is super sharp, so uh, have to be careful with it. Uh, okay. Mm, I now used this one uh, to rinse uh, these, uh, um, separate them from, from the water, and then I also rinse them uh, with uh, uh, tap water uh, to mild down the very, very pungent taste. So. Now they are probably quite mild. Let's taste one. Oh. Yeah. It's uh, mild enough. Those brown ones, uh, darker brown ones, are really. They can be really, really. Uh, have a really strong taste and uh, that can dominate your food if you are not careful. There you are. 
And these are now tasting uh, really mild. And I just add them here. Well, and then, well, let's see. Okay, now uh, they have uh, really dried out, and uh, we need to add this, uh, the butter, in order, to, uh -huh, in order to get them uh, like uh, so that they don't stick into my non-stick uh, skillet. <laughs> This also uh, enhances the taste of this. Butter has such an effect on uh, most uh, <laughs> most the food. And then I add some olive oil into there so to get this. Uh, well, this is not uh, without calories. <coughs> Okay, now it uh, just uh, goes there, and then we add uh, a few onions there, and these uh, I just uh, cut these uh, like this. yourself with this one. <laughs> Let's see how they do. They are doing quite well. Good. They still have quite a lot of water actually, but it's uh, I'll uh, lower uh, I'll uh, take down the heat now from them. I think uh, that's enough uh, for onions. Let's see. Well, yeah, it's enough. And now these uh, like uh, fry here, and they get this uh, umami uh, when they get uh, uh, well uh, this brown surface. Some of them especially the onions, but they burn really easily, so uh, care must be taken not to uh, make uh, it bitter. Because, uh, uh, well, onion, if you, if you overdo it in, in there, it will become uh, really bitter. Also, cook a few eggs uh, to be eaten with uh, the potatoes and this. Let's see if I can now open this package. This is a little bit tight. Huh. It's tight. Plastic package. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. So I place the eggs in the bottom of this uh, kettle. Let's see how many we can put there. 
like safely. I think seven is the amount I usually do, yes. And then I just uh, add water, <laughs> cold water, uh, just that they are covered, not more. Hopefully you can see this. And then I put it on the plate, set the full heat on, and uh, then wind my alarm clock here for 10 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, so this starts to be on the edge of being ready to be put some seasoning into. Well, in this case I'm using these herb cubes and uh, maybe some white pepper, maybe, I don't know. I would have uh, put uh, a special pepper called uh, Mauste Pippuri. I don't know what that is in English, but uh, that one is uh, would be the most suitable for those. These are like enhancing the umami in there. And they are also herb which suits well with mushrooms. Yeah, this starts to be ready to... They make uh, those uh, nice sounds. Yeah. Well, <coughs> now... These contain a lot of fat. <laughs> uh, well, I just put them there like that. And they also contain salt. A lot of that too. This is more than, you know, what this. Oh, sorry. Glee. <laughs> okay. And then uh, this container here uh, contains uh, wheat flour. And uh, this one I will uh, add to make it thicker. And I will actually add it here now. Uh, not uh, when I have uh, added uh, the the water. That's uh, the wrong time to do that. So I try to put it evenly into there. We all remember we already have a lot of uh, fat in this one, so we don't need to add any more. <laughs> There you are, not more than that. And then, uh, well, I'll take some, uh, this uh, should be not cold water, it should be as hot as I can get from uh, this tap. And it's uh, like pretty hot. And then I just pour it in, the, in there. I think that might do it, let's see. And then if you, See, I'm doing these movements of eight here. This might need a little bit more water. It might. Oh yeah. And uh, lower the heat <laughs> because it's otherwise it will uh, a little bit more. There you are. Yeah, uh, well I don't have exact measures here, so sorry about that. So I think it was uh, very two very big uh, spoonfuls of uh, flour, then maybe uh, four deciliters of water, and that amount of mushrooms, and uh, this is uh, going to be just fine. Okay, I don't add uh, this uh, white pepper, it's uh, not, I don't uh, like the taste in that thing. 
so it's quite <laughs> quite natural taste in that one. Uh, yeah. Then this one also away. Now let's see if you are on the frame. Whoop. Now you are. <laughs> so this is uh, about the correct consistency of this one. It doesn't become any thicker than this. And I think this is uh, looks well. It looks how it looks. <laughs> it looks well. It looks uh, like a mushroom sauce. <laughs> well, what do you expect? Well, now I'm tasting for the salt because, uh, well, uh, typically sauces should be a little bit salty because, uh, uh, well, they are usually used. Uh, 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 with uh, non-salty elements like potatoes or uh, maybe uh, pasta or something like that. Let's see how this is. That's okay. And this has a really nice taste. Yep. We definitely have made a good mushroom sauce. Now it just needs to... Well, I think this is ready to be used, actually. So I got off the heat from that one. Doesn't need to be heated anymore. Oh yeah. <coughs> well, um, the same principles as in uh, in my works as in my workshop apply also here in the kitchen. Uh, I always clean my mess. Actually, I do cleaning all the time, so that I don't leave a lot of uh, mess after me when I when, when I'm finished with this. Now we just wait for the eggs uh, and uh, uh, to cook. I will come back uh, when I uh, show what to do with them uh, when they are finished. Uh, well, uh, they are ready in uh, three minutes. Okay. These eggs have now been uh, boiling enough. Uh, they are, have been uh, slowly increasing in temperature. So normally you would cook them if you want them to be running inside something like three minutes. But uh, now they have been cooking maybe five minutes uh, cooking. Uh, and uh, since the temperature has been risen uh, slowly, they are like uh, more throughout. And what I'm doing here, I'm uh, cooling uh, the, them down here. And then I leave them in cold water. There you are. Let's take this type of plate. Can you see it? I have to check that you are on frame. Yes. And uh, yeah, what I do here is... Uh, well, uh, the process. Uh, I break the scale inside the water. This is because when you cool them down, there becomes a vacuum uh, in those eggs. And now this pulls uh, the cool water between the scale and there is a skin uh, in, a, in, a, in an egg. And uh, this makes it so that it's uh, easier to scale those uh, when, when, when now the time comes. Let's see now. And this has to be done under water, so, so that uh, they, if you then to do them over water, they suck air in. Now they suck water.
Well, oh, that one sucked the air. You could hear it. <laughs> okay, now I think these are now. Yeah, okay. Let's take the first one and see how, how, how did we do with it. This should peel off quite easily now, like that. Oh man. Oh, yeah, okay. Hopefully, yes, I got it intact and then I rinse it here to get rid of the remaining scales. There you are. There are a o x, and then we get have to get rid of these. Some scales here. <laughs> you could probably eat those uh, scales as well if you want to have calcium. Well, I have here some cold potatoes. Uh, well, I cooked them yesterday. Well, normally I would also eat the potato peels, the peelings, uh, the scale. But in this case I don't because uh, these are winter potatoes and they have a lot of uh, cork or something else in, in the scale. So, but they are easy enough to peel. However, you, you will lose most of the good stuff in potato with the scales. The most valuable uh, part of the potato is the scale, actually. And uh, the um, potato just under the scale. But, uh, well, uh, this uh, does not uh, taste very good. Okay, there you have it. And now I put them uh, into my mi microwave. Well, two minutes uh, in the microwave uh, makes wonders. Okay, we have here the potatoes, they are as you can see hot. And then I add uh, one tomato, just for a good measure. Please don't ask why my <laughs> knife is like this. It is. It's a good knife. You, you can slice tomatoes with it. Then we have one egg there, like that. And then we have a lot of this uh, sauce on top of the potatoes. Okay, there you are. And uh, well, after eating this, uh, I will uh, uh, call back you from the hospital. Uh, well, uh, that was actually delicious. Um, I really love the finished ma Finnish mushrooms. They are, well, uh, they are probably the same all over the Europe and probably also in the USA. I believe those mushrooms cannot be found in uh, in uh, I mean not don't mean in Canada in Canada for sure, but not in Austra Australia and New Zealand probably not. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, when you are picking those mushrooms, you really should uh, check what you are picking up. Uh, well, you can hospitalize yourself uh, quite rapidly if you. Uh, Accidentally, accidentally pick up some mushroom that is poisonous. There are some really nasty uh, mas mushrooms uh, in existence. Of course, also there are uh, most of them are really delicious, like the ones I picked up today. Well, uh, yeah. Well, in the next episode we are making that shaft. <laughs> uh, till then, bye. Come now.